Hi everyone. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I reviewed a book by Martin Jay called The Dialectical Imagination, which is a history of the Frankfurt School from 1923 to 1950. And I think I said in this video that I learned about Martin Jay because of a book that I'd read a couple of years ago called Songs of Experience, uh, Modern and European Variations on a Universal Theme. And that's the book that I want to review for you today, because I thought it was a little bit better than di The Dialectical Imagination, and it's kind of the book that uh, turned me on to Martin Jay in the first place. Martin Jay being the uh, Sidney Hellman Ehrman Professor of History at uh, Berkeley. So uh, here's the cover of the book. Songs of Experience, uh, Modern Modern American and European Variations on a Universal Theme. Um, and like I said in uh, the earlier review, it's basically a book that just talks about the history of philosophy maybe over the last 400, 450 years. As I'll talk about in the review, it sort of starts with Michel Montaigne and goes from there up until well into the 20th century. The last 500 years of Western philosophy have been pretty beguiled by the notion of what it means to have an authentic experience, and especially how it's been cordoned off, separated off from the sensorium of the human mind. In a highly worthy, what I thought was a highly worry, worthy contribution to the history of ideas, Martin Jay in this book aims to examine several modes of experience, as he calls them. The, the religious, the aesthetic, the historical, and the postmodern among them, so that we might better un understand how this precarious category of experience has been understood throughout the history of Western thought and Western philosophy. Jay begins out the book by distinguishing between the two large general types of experience that he calls Erlebnis, he takes them from, from German obviously, uh, Erlebnis is the immediate pre-reflective personal kind of experience, and the other one called Epharon, uh, which is based on sensual impressions and cognitive judgments, it's obviously the more when, when we think of philosophical, analytical experience and psychology, that's the one we're thinking of. When we think about memory and personal impressions and subjectivity, we're probably thinking more about Erlebnis. And one of the more interesting parts of the book, Jay details how Michel Montaigne reconfigures experience from a set of powers embodied in the human mind to a set of frail, frailties and weaknesses which delimit those powers. Hence his famous quip that to philosophize is to learn how to die. Montaigne's subjective interiority of experience was radically changed during the scientific revolution, of course, in which the scientific method externalized and objectified sensory data, creating a public sphere of inquiry which had never been in place before the 17th century. That's sort of the transition that I was talking about between, or rather from, Erlebnis to Enferon. The chapter progresses as a precis of Western philosophical traditions with everything from Francis Bacon's emphasis on observation to Kant's positing of the noumenal world that's the raw material for our transcendental faculties to feast upon and to create experiences out of. Jay then turns to a chapter uh, in which, uh, which he titles, I think, Appeal to Religious Experience, with, in which he discusses uh, Schleiermacher, William James, Rudolf Otto, and Martin Buber, among others. He also reads Schleiermacher, as most historians, I think, have, as a substantive response to Kant, a sort of anti-enlightenment personalism, which was continued by the likes of Buber and Otto, uh, Rudolf Otto, in the early part of the 20th century, writing about the numinous, right? His, his readings of these figures and his knowledge of the secondary material is really extensive to such a degree that he can 
really deftly portray the history of ideas not as something that comes from on high but as a, a great conversation that sort of old-fashioned phrase a great conversation uh, history and experience another section of the book explores some of the more popular trends in 19th and 20th century historiography uh, including Wilhelm Dilthe's distinction between uh, Naturwissenschaften and Geistwissenschaften, uh, arguably the distinction that launched modern historiographical, uh, excuse me, historiographical discourse as we recognize it today. Along with the ideas of uh, Collingwood, Joan Wallach Scott, and Franklin Ankerschmidt, uh, Collingwood's The Idea of History will uh, probably be most familiar to you. Um, but, but Scott and Ankersmut were, were new to me. Um, Scott, who is uh, coincidentally the mother of New York Times film critic A.O. Scott, she's, she happens to be a history professor, uh, questions one of the most fundamental assumptions of all historians, the idea of the constituted subject who can entertain historical experience objectively. Instead of taking for granted the idea of the knowing subject upon whom experience impinges itself, as had been done automatically by thinkers from Descartes to Kant, Scott argues the interpretive regimes of the historian are built a la Foucault, sort of think along the lines of Foucault, built not through a neutral intellective apparatus, but rather are shaped by and in turn shape themselves uh, historical experiences, as historical events. So there's sort of an interplay there instead of a, a direct uh, comprehension. Th they both shape one another. Uh, Franklin Anker Schmidt offers a subjective historiography of immediacy which blurs the lines between the knower and the known and Jay gives a really interesting introduction to Anger Schmidt in this book. As the book proceeds into uh, Bataille, Foucault, uh, Adorno, uh, Benjamin, and, and other thinkers, Jay detects a substantive disappearance of experience, at least as we have known the word before, and at least as he's used it earlier in the book, which is largely historically situated uh, in the First World War and the years immediately thereafter. This renders the tone of the final chapters into something of a threnody for something lost. It, I, I, I thought the... I mean, he, he doesn't get sentimental or maudlin about it, but he does think that uh, 20th century, the 20th century has really uh, rechanged uh, rechanged, reshaped the way that, that we think about what experience is. I thought this was a really great book. I read it a couple of years ago, so I relied largely on my uh, written review as I sometimes do in these videos. But uh, if you're at all interested in the subject, you could certainly do a lot worse than this. Uh, Songs of Experience, Modern European and American Variations on a Universal Theme by Martin Jay.